The next topic is treatment of gadolinium deposition disease. So the treatment of gadolinium deposition disease is an obvious uh, concept. Um, the, the three methods that I've described in general of dealing with the subject of, uh, of gadolinium deposition disease as far as uh, treatment approaches. So first thing is if you have gadolinium deposition disease and never get another gadolinium injection again, which seems sort of obvious, but unfortunately many people don't realize they have um, gadolinium deposition disease from an MRI study with gadolinium and then they get a follow-up to investigate what are these strange symptoms they have and the follow-up oftentimes is a gadolinium enhanced MRI and then the symptoms get worse and there's more panic and then it sets up a cycle in a number of individuals that they get multiple gadolinium injections and I've heard you know up to 50 gadolinium injections where the last 49 were all in the investigation of what turns out to be gadolinium deposition disease and with each time the condition being worse. And that's why it's so critical to recognize the disease as soon as it arises, because a number of people after one gadolinium injection can recover on their own. So avoiding getting gadolinium again. Uh, the second approach is not so important as a standalone, uh, but it's used for essentially all toxicities, and that is to simply detoxify. For me, the simplest approach of detoxification is, simp is to cut out all, um, all chemicals and processed, uh, chemical processed and um, uh, food items that have too many ingredients listed on them. So try to simplify uh, the, your diet into healthy uh, foods that don't contain a lot of chemicals and basically a diet along the lines of what people describe as a Mediterranean or South Beach or autoimmune diet. So natural, healthy foods and clean foods as much as possible. Try to cut out uh, too heavily processed food. The third is what I focus on um, as far as uh, treatment, and that is um, removal of gadolinium. So that also obviously makes sense if something's making you sick the smart thing to do is to get it out of your body. That kind of makes sense, correct? So the best way to do it is the same way the gadolinium agent was created. So people say, oh, chelation doesn't work. Well, and you know, radiology and so on, so, oh, chelation dangerous and so on. Basically what we're doing is using the same biochemical principles of how the gadolinium agent was created to begin with. And done correctly, it's very safe. We use uh, chelation with the most stable chelator available. Again, the same concept as when you would get a gadolinium agent. <clears throat> Focus on getting the gadolinium agent, which is the most stable, and that's what we've done in radiology. Well, the same is true of the chelator. <clears throat> so the most stable available. Right now, that's IV uh, DTPA, which happens to be the ligand that is one, which has been one of the most um, widely used not only with MR contrast agents, but with other agents such as in nuclear medicines as well. So we use IV DTPA and we administer it concurrently with uh, steroids to keep down the immune response because fundamentally this disease appears to be a T-cell dysregulation, which happens to be the same as many other forms of um, immune-mediated inflammatory diseases. So that's everything from rheumatoid arthritis to all the new uh, diseases, long haul COVID, long haul chronic inflammatory syndrome, cytokine release syndrome, etc. So <clears throat> the critical things about the treatment, we start now with a low amount of chelator, a relatively high amount of steroids, and we move towards more chelator and less steroids with time. Again, all these things are uh, wisdom sense. That that's how it should be done. Chelation should be spaced one to four weeks apart. And um, realistically, most people require at least five chelation sessions. And why is that? Because um, whenever we chelate, we remove 
The most of the gadolin that we remove is from reservoirs which are more most easily accessible. So this is skin and soft tissues, including the brain. And the most durable reservoir, which happens to be also one of the two largest, that being the most durable one, bone, less durable, also very large is skin. But to get the gadolinium out of the bone, not only do we uh, have some primary removal with DTPA, which other available chelators can't remove it from bone because it, they don't have the, uh, if you like, the magnetic strength to pull it out of bone. Um, so most of the removal of bone, we rely on Le Chatelier's principle, which is everything strives for equilibrium. So when we chelate, most of the gadolinium comes out of the skin. So with time, and it really becomes very noticeable at three weeks, um, there, uh, the uh, body undergoes a process of re-equilibration. So the pools of gadolinium uh, strive to get uh, in the same uh, uh, relationship as they had before. So gadolinium naturally moves from bone to skin. That's called re-equilibration. Interestingly, it also has a pain associated with that, and we call that re-equilibration flare which happens to be one of the critical um, diagnostic features of determining if the patient is suffering from gadolinium deposition disease. So <clears throat> we need to go through several cycles of removing from skin and soft tissues, GAD moving from, from bone back to skin, soft tissues, moving from skin and soft tissues, GAD moving from bone back to skin and soft tissues. And usually five chelations is the least to remove the total amount of gadolinium uh, most effectively. The other major um, uh, flare is what happens right away after um, you administer the chelator that we call GAD, gadolinium removal flare. That's what we call when you, we've used an effective chelator like DTPA. Um, if you use a weak chelator, which I never recommend being done, then you also get a GAD, gadolinium redistribution, which is GAD, gadolinium being picked up in the body, then immediately re-released. So for instance, GAD, gadolinium picked up in the skin, immediately re-released and going to brain. So that's why I never, ever, ever recommend people to get a weaker chelator such as EDTA or even worse, DMSA or DMPS. I only use IV, um, DTPA because it's the strongest available chelator. In the future, uh, there are oral uh, chelators in development, Hopo being one of them, that will assume a very important role in the removal of gadolinium. Thank you.